Hey, it's Mike here, and today, the Whole30 diet. What is it? Is it where you just shop at Whole Foods for 30 days? Insufficient funds. Please surrender your soul to Amazon Corporation. No. Is it where you get thrown in a hole for 30 days? Hey, let me out! How is this a diet? No. Is it just where you eat whole, unprocessed foods for 30 days? That's what they market it as, but there is so much more going on than that. And so we're going to look at all of the claims, the contradictions, the numbers, and some research to put the diet to the test. So let's do this. Now, I know some people are probably coming here who have a lot of faith in the Whole30 diet, and they don't want to hear anything bad about it. But I just ask to be open-minded because there are some issues with the diet. And this might be asking a lot, but please at least watch until the end before dropping that standard, you're a vegan, therefore I'm not listening to you comment. All right. Now I'd heard a lot about this diet and up until recently I hadn't looked closely at the details. I heard it was more or less a reducitarian diet where you're dodging those processed foods. Sounded good to me, step in the right direction. I was wrong, very, very wrong. Now before we get into why, let's look at the background a little bit. It was started by a sports nutritionist named Melissa Hartwig. And we we will see what she eats on her Instagram in a bit, but we're not here to focus on her. We're here to focus on the diet. And the main premise of the diet is that it's 30 days long and you're not supposed to weigh yourself during those 30 days. But what are you actually supposed to eat? Well, first starting with what you're not supposed to eat from their website, they say that certain food groups are negatively impacting your health. Sugar, yeah, that's obvious. No grains, I'd like to see them demonstrate why whole grains are bad and general studies are showing better health outcomes with whole grains, but whatever. Dairy, yeah, I have several videos about that and the science on that, but finally, no legumes, what? Another legume-free diet. How are they having a negative impact on your health? Don't tell me it's lectins. I have a whole plant paradox video. You may have seen me mention this study before. Legumes were the number one dietary predictor of elderly survival. This is not an unhealthy food. Then when you realize that they ask you to limit fruit, it becomes clear that they're just knocking out sources of carbs to push you toward a low carb diet, even healthier ones like whole grains, legumes, and fruit. Now for the first of many contradictions, they actually go directly against their anti-dairy statement and have the exception of ghee or clarified butter. Ghee is okay, and if you're wondering what ghee is, it's as if they took butter, processed it even more, and scraped out everything that wasn't saturated fat. So the saturated fat content is even higher than normal butter. But if you're on this diet, you've probably been told that saturated fat isn't bad. They probably pointed to dairy industry funded studies like this one. No, the reality is from the controlled feeding trials we have, in this case, nearly four 400 show that more saturated fat means higher cholesterol. You've probably also been shown egg industry funded studies about how cholesterol isn't bad and I have videos going deep into the research on that so I'll just link those below. And it gets worse. Ghee isn't just allowed occasionally. They're actually recommending you to add refined fats to every single meal of the day. Following their advice you could be adding up to two thumb-sized chunks of ghee to three meals a day or oil, but let's just stick to ghee because it's pretty sticky. From this article, using hand measurements, a thumb-sized chunk is equivalent to a tablespoon. And, you know, it depends on your thumb. You know, here's a tablespoon. I think my thumb is larger, but let's go with it. So looking to how bad it could get within the recommendations of the diet, if somebody's doing six tablespoons of ghee a day, assuming they didn't underestimate from that thumb-sized point, then they're going to be up around 670 calories of ghee per day, which totals to over 47 grams of saturated fat in a single day. And and from the American Heart Association, the average person shouldn't be eating more than 13 grams of saturated fat in a single day, so way over the limit. And yes, that's worst case scenario, but I also wasn't counting any of the saturated fat that would be in other animal products like meat or eggs. All right, moving on. Now let's look at what they encourage, quote, Eat moderate portions of meat, seafood, and eggs, lots of vegetables, some fruit, plenty of natural fats, and herbs, spices, and seasonings. But what does moderate meat actually refer to? Well, from their guide, quote, base each meal around one to two palm-sized protein sources. And you're supposed to avoid beans and legumes, so that's one to two palm-sized servings of animal protein, whether it's meat or eggs or whatever. You know, here's like something that's the size of a credit card. This is my palm. My palm's pretty big, but that's a lot of animal protein. That's not moderation, I'm sorry. How about uh, one to two moderate slaps in the face? Because that's what you're doing to your body with this diet. It's not low meat, it's not reducitarian. It's literally meat and eggs fried in oil or slathered in ghee all the time. I mean, here, let's look at one meal plan. Here's day one, meal one, fried eggs, sweet potato, which otherwise would be fine if they weren't fried, and also some carcinogenic sausages. 
With that meal in mind, I love this, I love this statement. Let your body heal and recover from whatever effects those bad foods may be causing. Push the reset button with your metabolism, systematic inflammation, and the downstream effects of the food choices you've been making. Start your purification off with some fried food, artery clogging cholesterol, and carcinogenic meats. Now day one of your cleanse, basically recreate the McDonald's dollar menu without the bun. Now for a second I thought that meal plan wasn't officially put out by Whole30, maybe they got it wrong. Maybe you can't start your reset with fried foods. Nope, from their site, they recommend on the shopping list to stock up on processed oils, and yes, all oils are processed, and of course that butter and ghee. So you can fry stuff. This isn't Whole30. This is Refined Fats 30. It's further corroborated by looking at Melissa, the Whole30 founder's Instagram, which first of all, you'd think she wouldn't be posting any, you know, carcinogenic meats and stuff like that, but nope, to this one massive tray of sausages that she's feeding to kids at school. She also has plenty of pictures with fried foods, enough eggs to start a cholesterol collection. I know that's not a real thing. And what's that on the side? Bacon, despite saying don't eat bacon in the guidelines. And she hashtagged January Whole30, so you know she's presenting it as what you can eat. The reality is that this is just a repackaging of the paleo diet into a 30-day cleanse. Look, they even partnered with Paleo Meal Services and Paleo Cookbooks. So this is just another low-carb diet. Yeah, they don't specifically have you count macros, but you can tell by how you're not allowed to eat legumes unless they're green beans, ones that don't have a lot of carbs in them, or you're not allowed to eat processed foods unless it's processed oil and high fat. It's a pattern of food restriction that molds you into eating a low carb diet. Yeah, you could probably really try to get some carbs from sweet potatoes and other things like that. But in general, the landscape of food here is low carb. And we know from studies like this that low carb high meat diets accelerate artery clogging. And from this study, you generally gain back the weight that you lost, if not more. And from this one, meta-analysis showing that they increase all-cause mortality as well. There's no reason to believe that this one is any different. And you can't even tell me that it's different because they're dodging processed foods. It's dodging sugar like previous old-school low-carb diets. You're still eating refined fats. I mean, come on. And you might be thinking, but she looks good. She looks fit. I want to look like that, so I'll do this diet. But that reminds me of Bob Harper. He looked great. He was a trainer. He was physically active and from this, quote, followed a healthy paleo diet and had routine checkups with his cardiologist, and still, he got a heart attack young. And now he has added whole grains and complex carbs to his diet. Now for one thing that they did right that I think definitely covers themselves is that they say no alcohol, especially when you're considering that the average person in the US is drinking about 10 drinks per week. So people could lose weight on that alone and they're gonna feel way better, their liver's gonna do better, they might have better energy. So you can eat what is basically a low carb standard American diet with no alcohol and feel better than your normal standard American diet with alcohol. And moving on, guess what you will not find on their website? Research, this is the closest that I think I found. Quote, more than 95% of participants lose weight and improve their body composition without counting or restricting calories. No sources listed, no indication of how much their body composition changed. And I can't help but wonder how this was recorded, especially when you see all the reports of people that actually ended up gaining some weight on the diet or ended up exactly the same. And it says you aren't supposed to restrict calories, but let's be real, if you're juggling all of these random dietary rules, you might accidentally restrict for the first three weeks until you finally get the hang of it. And I love looking at the benefits that they tout of this diet. I mean, you can count on from reports that you might end up with a sunnier disposition. Yes, you too can be a positivity clone. Whole 30, whole 30, whole 30. Hell 30, hell 666. And sunny disposition, are, are you being serious? Have you met somebody who is on a low carb diet? First they cut carbs, then they cut you for eating a piece of whole wheat pasta somewhere near them. Is that marinara or is, or is that blood? And don't forget those testimonials. You name it, Whole30 works for that, backed by zero science. Fibromyalgia, Whole30. Diverticulitis, Whole30. Depression, Whole30. At least when I did my depression video, I highlighted studies put on a vegan diet that showed improved mental health or about how arachidonic acid in animal products is linked to higher depression scores and suicide scores and so forth. But they tell you to eat more arachidonic acid in the form of eggs and meat and tell you that it could be helping your bipolar 
bipolar disorder. That's a dangerous road to go down. You don't need people going off their bipolar meds and replacing them with ghee. I will say this though, removing dairy, for example, can help with things like PCOS and endometriosis because you're no longer consuming those exogenous mammalian hormones, which can raise your estrogen levels and lower your testosterone levels as this study demonstrated. But you don't need to be clogging your arteries with all of this other animal fat while getting rid of dairy minus ghee at the same time. You just don't. And now I don't consider them a massive authority or anything, but for what it's worth, US News gave this diet a rating of two out of five. That is harsh. Finally, we have to consider factors other than yourself here. This is a diet where you're gonna be eating a lot of animals. They act like it's a moderate consumption of meat, but no, remember one to two palmfuls of these proteins per day, which are almost guaranteed animal derived. It's not low meat. You're full of ghee hole 30. Is that? ghee dripping out of your ear? Did your brain turn to ghee? No, that's my sunnier disposition. No, the average American is eating a high meat diet and they have a massive impact on the environment and animals, period. The last thing we need to do is be increasing that or eating the same way and pretending that we're doing better. That's almost worse. In the end, this repackaged paleo crash diet is not gonna make you healthier in the long term. If anything, it could be putting you at an increased risk of artery issues, heart issues. And it really bothers me that they push the whole aspect here. It's Whole30, where you eat processed fried foods, processed oils, processed clarified butter, and processed carcinogenic meats. Whole, it means processed. Would you like to start your cleanse now? Here's your prescription for heart disease. Wait a minute, I don't want heart disease. But you like fried food, right? I'm gonna throw away my scale right now, go off my bipolar meds, let's, let's go, let's do this. And what bothers me more is that there's no research behind this diet yet as somebody who espouses a whole food vegan diet which has earned its title by the research that it has on studies reversing heart disease by opening up arteries and stopping it in its tracks and reversing diabetes and showing actual long-term weight loss without restriction or exercise like the Broad study did and so forth. So I'm gonna start my own diet fad. It's called Whole Vegan 30 Plus because not only is it vegan, but you do it for more than 30 days. So definitely start that. And, and I, have a, I have a cookbook with whole foods. I just so happen to have a very whole food vegan oriented cookbook linked down below. You can find it. But finally, people will love the high meat whole 30 diet because it not only tells you good news about your bad habits, but it tells you that you're doing some magical reset while you're continuing to eat some of the least healthy foods in your diet, all while potentially reversing everything from infertility to ADD. Yes, it touts reported improvements in both of those. Now, I don't doubt that Melissa does actually believe that she founded a healthy diet, but the reality is that it's not. The benefits that you are gonna get are, well, if you're an alcoholic and giving up alcohol, if you're just restricting because of the complexity of the diet, that might lead to some weight loss, or if you had a really horrible, horrible standard American diet. So let me know down below what you think about this diet, and I haven't mentioned this in like 20 videos. I do have a Patreon, so if you wanna support me, feel free to go over there, and thank you so much for those who do. So that's it, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. The average person in the US is drinking about 10 drinks per drink.